So generators, they can seem a big ugly mystery and indeed if you get right into them they're incredibly complex but understanding them and the principles of them and getting to grips with simple generators is in fact astonishingly simple because they don't do that much. Now almost universally the way we generate electricity is we take kinetic energy, some kind of movement like the movement of water or the wind or your arm or your legs or an engine, whatever it is, some kind of movement and then we use that movement to move magnets over a coil of wire. What we're essentially doing is giving the electrons in that coil of wire a shove. We shove them along the wire until we get to the end of the wire and hey presto, we've generated electricity. Now why electrons will be shoved along a wire when you pass a magnet over it is a subject of great debate, but the fact remains, it does that. And we can use that simple fact to create generators. If we put bundles of wire in masses of magnets, move those magnets, we will generate. Of course, we need to move them, and that's where that kinetic energy comes in. Kinetic energy is the energy of movement. If we use some form of movement to move those magnets, we will generate as long as they're passing over a coil of wire. So one basic principle should be pretty clear. We need something moving. We need to capture that movement and use it to move the magnets over the coil of wire to transfer kinetic energy into electrical energy. So the magnets need to move. Now this might seem like really stupid obvious stuff to say, but I can't tell you how many people seem to think that an electrical generator creates electricity. It doesn't. An electrical generator is a machine that transforms kinetic energy into electrical energy. Well that means is there is no creation. It's a transformation. You'll only get out the energy you put in with the losses in the transformation. So practically, what does that mean? Because when you make something, you want to know what's going to make a difference. And if I take a single piece of wire and waggle a magnet over it, I'm not going to get a lot out. If I put a lot of wire in there, I'm going to get a lot out. Direct relation to how much wire is in that magnetic field. So basically, the more wire, the better. If you can get a load of wire in a strong magnetic field, you're going to do well. If you have stronger magnets, you're going to do well, because of course the magnets are the things that are doing the pushing. The nearer the magnets get to each other or to the wire, the stronger the magnetic field is. And that's because the a magnetic field is in direct relation to the square of the distance. So you get it really close, you're going to get a good strong magnetic field that can give it a hefty push. And of course, the quicker you can do it, the better it's going to be. So those things, the length of the wire, the strength of the magnetic field and the speed at which you push it, are all going to have a really big impact. And then there's one more. This one more is very often the thing that foxes people, so much so I'm going to do a separate video on it, but it's how hard you push it. So briefly, it's because you're going to do work. I mean, that's the whole point of it. And work is just the energy transferred in a system from one point to another. So if you need to do a lot of work, then you're going to need to put a lot of work in to do a lot of work out. And of course, power is just work over time. So if you need a powerful machine, you need to have a lot of power going in. And of course, in order to capture that and transform it and push it back out, you need a pretty chunky machine. I mean, you wouldn't try to drive a six inch nail with a pin hammer. You need a lot more work to drive a big chunky nail. But equal with the panel pin, well, you don't need to do a lot of work, so a lightweight machine is going to do the job just Jim dandy. So it seems as if electricity is a very mysterious force, and I guess that's because the way we meet it every day. But actually, it's just the same as using hammers and nails. The same principles apply. You're going to do a lot of work out. You need a lot of work in. If you need a lot of power, 
then you need something that can cope with it, both on the in, where you're capturing the kinetic energy in order to do work, and the out, where you're pushing against the resistance in order to heat something up, or light a light, or whatever work you want that electrical energy to do, it's the same principle as driving a nail. Of course, the thing people seem to forget is that it's all about compromises. It's the way it is. So speed is always set against torque and wire thickness is always set against voltage because the thinner the wire, the more voltage you'll get, but the more amps you'll get, the more likely it is to burn thin wire. So you know, thicker wire and thicker wire means you won't get as much wire in the space and you'll get a lower voltage. Because they're mutually exclusive, compromises are always necessary. All you need to think about what it is you want to do and make your choices on that. So if you want something with lots of amps, well, you're going to need some thick, chunky wire. If you need something with lots of volts, then your loads of thin wire is going to be the better idea. So compromises are everywhere when it comes to making things, meaning nothing is ever going to be perfect. And the same thing is true of the best. It's going to depend what you want to do with it. It's probably rather pointless trying to put photos in a photo frame with a sledgehammer. So what you want to do with it is going to be an important consideration when making your decisions on which compromises you're going to make. Now, you may or may not have noticed that I haven't talked about efficiency. And that's because your modern launch generator these days is in the range of 99% efficient, which is astounding. Now, it doesn't rely on an esoteric coil arrangement. Actually, that kind of efficiency is directly related to the quality of the engineering, how close the tolerances are. Now, I'm not saying that strange coil arrangements and interesting magnet arrangements don't make a difference. What I'm saying is that the better you make it, the more impact it's likely to have on efficiency. And this is all about compromises that we talked about earlier. I tend to favour serpentine coils, not because I think they're efficient. I favour them because I think they're much simpler to construct in the home workshop. And let's face it, Making anything is a billion times more efficient than making nothing at all. So being able to make it easier is one of the things that's a constraint or an interesting thing for me, which is why I make that choice and why I further serpentine coils. I don't think they're intrinsically any more efficient than any other coil arrangement. It's just they're easier to make. And that's the whole point. If you're looking to make a generator, the point is to make a generator. If you want it to be more efficient, then I would say you're better spending your time engineering it better than searching the internet for a strange call arrangement. And of course, that's going to be down to the tools and skills you have in using those tools, how well you're going to be able to construct it. So if you've never made a generator before, and your plan is to chisel one out of some old fence panels with a sharpened screwdriver, then it'll work. Anything will work. Just don't expect it to be terribly efficient. If you're looking for something that's going to be brilliantly efficient, then learn your tools. Get better tools and construct something with closer tolerances. That's going to give you a much quicker reward than hours of searching the internet and failures in building, or worse, not building at all. If you're working with the tools and the materials you've got, then brilliant, it's much better to be building something than building nothing. But don't be disappointed if the efficiency isn't up to 99%. It's not going to be, but it's going to be a generator, and you're going to have made it, and that in itself is awesome. Anyway, I wanted to share those ideas with you because I'm going to make a new generator that I'm calling the Crystal Generator, and I thought it was important to have a look at some of these guiding principles before we launch into the build. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.